there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got a lot of fun. Hey there. Welcome to my channel. My name is Linda. I've got a lot of fun DIY crafts for you today. So what are we waiting for? Let's get started. Today we will be making farmhouse home decor using mostly Dollar Tree supplies. So let's get started with project number one. Before we get into the actual project, I want to explain why I made this project today. I had a beautiful subscriber, Robin, uh, leave a comment for me on one of my past videos explaining how she just lost her son this past May. And of course, that just tugged at my heartstrings. And she was wondering if I could show how to make something really, really easy for her to remake to, you know, house the memory of her son. And so this is what I came up with. From Dollar Tree, we're going to be using these long slat boards. We're going to use six of them. And then we're going to use two of these shorter little, I call them slat boards anyway. And then I'm going to use this heart from Dollar Tree. If you can't find this uh, type of heart there, I know Dollar Tree makes just the plain plain more simple looking hearts but i love this one because i love the personality of it you know of, of the way it looks all right so first thing we're going to do here is just going to take our slap boards again as i'm calling them i'm just going to kind of lay them in a vertical position here and then i'm going to start taking some wood glue here and we're just going to wood glue all of these boards together I'm gonna go ahead and skip ahead a little bit for you because it's just the same process all the way through. We'll get this last board on here. Very simple, nice and easy. And then of course, I'm gonna take some clamps and just clamp it together from the sides here and let that sit for a little while. Once it's done, I'm gonna take these two shorter boards. Now you could, we're just gonna put them on the end, you know, like, like almost a banner type thing you could leave these boards this length they're just going to have a little bit of you know space between the top and bottom of the heart and that's perfectly wonderful but i want to just take a couple of inches off so my board's not as long but if you know you don't have access to being able to cut that just leave them the length that they are of course going ahead and adding some wood glue to both of these and we're going to put them onto the top and bottom of this i'm doing it kind of underneath <laughs> That way I can see how much is kind of poking out from either end and just lay some heavy paint cans on top and let that set up till it dries. Let's move on to our heart here. What I've got here, I just am going to flip over, use the other side, and I traced it and then I cut it a little bit shorter all the way around uh, using some scrapbook paper here. And I'm going to go ahead and take this to my sewing machine so I could add some beautiful, subtle texture on it here. Those of you might be new to my channel, and those of you, I'm sorry, you've heard this spiel a long time, but you know how it goes. Um, I love taking my paper to the sewing machine, and I just sew on it like it's fabric. I use a size 9 or 10 needle. I use all polyester thread. My machine likes that, but you can use cotton. My stitch length, the highest stitch length is 4, so that's what it's on, and my tension set on 4. But don't be scared of it, just regular fabric like you're sewing on that. Here's what it looks like when it's all done. And then I'm gonna take the open end of my scissor blades and I'm gonna scrape along the edges of my paper all the way around. And you can see how this just kind of roughens it up. It gives us a little bit of a rustic texture. And it also allows when this paper goes to sit on whatever you're putting it on, it kind of just gives that subtle little bit of, um, you know, differentiating whatever you want to call it between the paper and the wood so the paper doesn't just kind of fall flat into the wood it kind of helps lift it up off of the wood a little bit all right it's a really fun easy thing to do and I do it all the time here's what you can see that it looks like we're going to set that aside for a while we're going to go in I'm going to use this Waverly wax uh, I get it from Walmart. I've mixed it with some water and I've taped off the inside of the board and I'm just going to use this and stain those top and bottom pieces. And I'll stain it all the way around the front and sides and everything, of course. Skipping ahead a little bit for you because, you know, you know how to do this. <laughs> I just kind of wanted, I was thought about painting it all the same color, which you could, of course, but I wanted just to kind of have that little bit of, you know, uh, different like border and see how the wood kind of just sticks off about a quarter inch on both sides I didn't want to cut it that was fine to me so I'm staining that too now for the center portion I'm going to use this Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color drop cloth and I'm going to get that all painted up just one coat because I am going to sand and distress it and of course I will paint it you know front and back so it's nice and finished off 
just about there. And then once I get that done, I'll go ahead and paint around the perimeter of the heart here, as you can see as well, because remember we left a little bit of that wood showing, and I'll take it outside and distress it off camera. So for this part, I created a vinyl quote using my Cricut Design Space program. It says my heart rests here, and I'll make sure I leave the link to the font I used from Creative Fabrica in the description box for you. And I kind of had to cut this quote up so that it would fit, you know, where I wanted it to on this heart. And once you get it rubbed off, when you're putting vinyl on paper, as long as you take your transfer paper and you just peel it really slow, a little bit of a back and forth motion, you know, 99% of the time you won't rip your paper. I get kind of a lot of questions on that. Plus the transfer paper, the regular transfer paper from Cricut, because I know they have like a really strong tack one. The regular tack one isn't that strong so it doesn't really you know stick to the paper so much so once i get that on there i'm going to go ahead and add some glue to the back of this and i'm going to attach it to the front of our wood heart and i'll use my little brayer here make sure i get that down nice and good and then i've got a little wood mini clothespin here i'm going to put on the left side which can of course house your photo now i tried to design this project so of course as i stated earlier it could be used for you know a memorial type home decor project, but it could also go for just everyday home decor. Any type of picture would fit in it, as you'll see kind of at the end results uh, when I show this to you. Using my Fabri-Tac glue, get this on into position and let that set up. Now, one more thing, Robin, I know you wanted me to create something that you can make very easily, but and I'm sorry I have to use this tagline, but shipping is expensive. But if you are here in the USA, I hope that you will allow me the privilege of sending this to you as a gift. Uh, my email is in the description box. Just email me with your mailing address and I would love, love, love to send this out to you from my heart to yours. Okay, so once I get this heart on here, I'm gonna set some paint cans on it till it dries completely. And then that makes this project complete. So let's move on to project number two. For this project, I'll be using this round sign from Dollar Tree. I wanted to create something for my niece who's expecting her first child, her and her husband, of course, and I'm kind of going back to my scrapbooking days a little bit, so I hope you all don't mind it. I wanted to make a home decor piece for the nursery. I'm also using this from Dollar Tree. It comes in that five pack of wood, and this from Hobby Lobby. It comes in a five pack, or you can use these square ones that come from Dollar Tree, and then this is also from Dollar Tree as well. Okay, so first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and remove this metal word. You could use it if you want, um, reuse it. I'm not going to on this particular project, but of course I'll save it for something else. And then I'll just remove the little hanging part and staples from this little hanging sign. And then I'm also going to use this heart from Dollar Tree. Um, Valentine's, they put out the pack of like five heart, these glitter hearts to a package I think it's five, and I've got a few of them just for a pattern, and I'm redrawing this heart onto some cardboard. I'll make sure I have the link in the description box down below. I buy a 25-pack of cardboard um, from joannes.com, and then later on, you'll see me using some black cardboard. That's a six-by-six six size. I'll have that link in the description box for you as well. I'm going to go ahead and sand off once that heart's cut out, sand off kind of just oh, a sixteenth of an inch of paper off around the front of this sign, just so a little bit of that wood is exposed. And I'm going to take some scrapbook paper here, and I'm going to turn this sign over, and I'm going to trace it onto this. I'm going to be covering the front and the back, of course. Got the front all cut out. And then I've got the back cut out with just some regular black cardstock. I want to just make sure all of that is covered up, and it looks really nicely finished. 
And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, just show a little bit of it here, but I'm going to go ahead and trace around all my wood pieces. The back sides will be covered completely. And then the front sides of my wood pieces, I'm going to uh, cut them down just a little bit so a little bit of that perimeter shows. And I like to mark, mark which is the front and back, of course. So this one I'm going to cut down just like, you know, an eighth of an inch here around the sides. I just like to add that little bit of detailing. Really easy to do. There, you can see what it'll look like like that. And like I said, I'll go ahead and do that with all these remaining uh, wood pieces here. Then, of course, like the first project, right, I'm bringing all my paper pieces to the sewing machine. Yeah, so I didn't know I wasn't going to film this at first because it, it is a little bit more scrapbooky. But then I thought, you know, why not? It's something a little bit different. And you could do something very similar, just covering. And I tried to make it very, very simple. Um, and, you know, just kind of have that scrapbook look to it, right? Because um, I have a lot of scrapbooking supplies. Uh, so here, again, taking the open end of my scissor blades, just like in the first project, and just scraping around the edges, since we'll be kind of layering a lot of wood pieces and papers, this is really going to help kind of, you know, uh, differentiate between the layers and stuff. All right? I'm going to use Debbie's Design Diary Little Black Dress for this round wood piece, which is essentially going to be our frame. And then Debbie's Design Diary White Swan, both chalk paints. I'm going to paint all the rest of the uh, pieces here. I wanted this just kind of be like the frame. It's already like on a little base. It'll stand upright. And I'm doing it kind of in the colors of, you know, what our nursery is going to be. And yes, I already gave it to her. And she loved it, of course. <laughs> here I am going ahead and using the uh, white chalk paint here and kind of painting around, just around the perimeter because we're going to cover the center. But I do this front and back on all of them because you will be able to see some of the pieces from the back side because things will kind of hang off the edge. So I just kind of want to make sure I get around the perimeter front and back. And then these two pieces here, um, it's from a set called Sweet as Honey and in a set of three chain link frames. They come from ReneeBouquets.com. They're beautiful board, laser cut chipboard. And then the Love Word is just a wood word out of my supply. And even though these ReneeBouquet products, um, they are almost the color of white. They're, they're just a little bit off white. So I'm just making sure, and of course the wood piece, making sure I paint them with that same white swan chalk paint. Just so it matches all the other pieces, of course. Once that is all done, ready to go, I'm using the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue again, and we're going to start getting every piece of paper into position. So we're getting the front piece on and the back, so that looks all nice and finished. And then we'll start getting all our pieces onto our uh, excess wood pieces. The back's completely covered, like I said, and in the front you'll see a little bit of perimeter around it, see, just like that, on all the pieces. Again, back covered. And the front a little bit of perimeter around it. You don't have to do that. I just like to allow that wood to show a little bit. Get this other piece on. Grays and pinks, of course. This one I'm kind of double layering. You don't have to do that as well, but I wanted to just kind of have the title area stand out a little bit. Adding our paper pieces to the front and back of our heart. And then I'm kind of seeing here where I want my heart to go, and I'm going to mark it with a pencil so I know where not to put glue. Because, <laughs> you know, we don't want that glue to show up above. And then I'll go ahead and kind of erase my pencil lines here before I get it into position. Just like that. And then here's the black cardstock I was talking about chipboard I was talking about earlier. They come in six by six pieces and I'm cutting those up and layering them because since I'm using wood, you know, wood's thick and I want everything, each layer to lay level on top of the previous layer. So I use this black cardstock so that you don't really see it if you turn the project to the side or anything. And I layer up how many levels of cards or uh, chipboard, I keep calling it cardstock, chipboard that I need it to be to, you know, be able to allow that next layer to level up. Adding just a little strip of paper here just to kind of give it a few more layers on that one piece of board there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and lay my title down here, Sweet Love. Now, if you wanted to, here's where you could bring back that metal word that we took off at the beginning and put it in this spot instead of doing something like this. So there's an idea for you. 
And then this is the photo I'm using. Isn't it just a gorgeous photo? Oh, I love this picture. Love it, love it, love it. Um, and I'm putting the frame around that, as you can see, that Renee K frame. And I'm just adding some glue on the back of the photo. And then I'm adding a little mini clothespin here as well and going to glue it around the frame and the photo. And that Beacon Fabri-Tac glue is acid-free, so it's safe for your photos, of course. All right, I'm just kind of laying things here to see where I want everything to be. And then this little uh, quote here, it was on like a little decorated scrapbook piece. And so I just retyped it onto some paper that matched my project. And it just in French says always together. So I'm just laying my pieces here so I know where to put this little, you know, quote here on the side. And then adding some more black chipboard, let's say it right, onto the back of the photo. Because, you know, we've got to, you know, allow that to level up and layer correctly. And then we'll get this other wood piece on here into position. A lot of layering. And then I need to take up some space here um, underneath the photo where our title will kind of lay up over that as well. I'm going to lay that right up above that piece because we want our little title on that wood to lay level as well. So we need to add some, you know, chipboard behind that too. And I'm layering another, another <laughs> tongue tied, another little quote just says beautiful again, typed it off my computer, laying it to the side of the uh, other side of the photo here and get my last little pieces of chipboard down here. So it gives me a place to glue up top and then a place to glue on at the pedestal base as well. And then once I get this wood piece into position, that makes this project complete. So let's move on to our last project, number three. For this project, we're actually going to make the same project twice, a one larger and one smaller version, because I know some of you, you know, do and some of you don't have an electronic cutting machine. I'll be using two different fabrics for each just to make it fun. So for this first one, I'm going to use two of the black and white check fabric and one of the white fabric from Dollar Tree and one spool of this black gross grain ribbon. For my quote, I downloaded from creativefabrica.com this pre-made quote. I'll give you the quote size later into my Cricut Design Space, and then I cut it out on iron-on vinyl, okay? So those of you that have a cutting machine, you're going to kind of follow this one. For the smaller of the project, just to make it fun, I'm going to use two of this uh, kind of blackish gray and white striped fabric and one of the plain white fabric and then this black and white striped spool ribbon from Dollar Tree. If you don't have an electronic cutting machine, I found this iron-on transfer paper from Walmart. It has seven sheets in it. Use on a light-colored fabric. Oh, around $10 a pack, but you get seven of them. But these only come eight and a half by 11 size. So I wanted to create that smaller size pattern for you. And this is what it looks like. You print it out on your regular, you know, computer. I use Microsoft uh, Publisher when I did it. I just printed it mirror image. You download it on your computer, printed it mirror image into my uh, from my program and it was ready to go. All right. So the large pillow, the quote size is 10 and a half inch in length, 11 and a half inch wide. That's for electronic cutting machine. You're going to cut two of the 14 by 17 inches out of your checked fabric. And you're going to cut one out of the white fabric, 12 by 15. Okay. For your smaller pillow, the quote size is eight inches in length and seven and three quarter inches in height. You're going to cut two out of the 11 and a half by 14 inch size out of your striped fabric. And then you're going to cut one nine and a half inch by 12 inch, which is about this size, out of your white fabric. Okay, so let's move to the larger pillow. The concept is the same through all of it. 
These are my pieces already cut for the large size pillow. And you can see here how the larger size quote fits on that pillow. All right, this is how the smaller size quote fits on the smaller pillow. Now you, of course, could make the larger size pillow and use the smaller quote on that. It's perfectly fine either way you wanna do it. I just wanted to give you option whether you're using electronic cutting machine quote or you had to print it out from your computer quote. And here's a little Marley break as soon as I took everything off the center <laughs> of my thing to get started on the project. She came and just laid right down in the middle for you. <laughs> as I always say, right? It's a professional video, folks. <laughs> Not really, but there it is. Okay, so back to pillow time. I'm going to take the white fabric and I'm going to pin it to one piece of March or checked fabric. And if you're doing, you know, the smaller size pillow, whatever, it's like a, it's the same process through both pillows. I just wanted to show you that. If you were a gluer, I would use Beacon Fabri-Tac glue to glue this on the front of that. You will see that glue a little bit until it dries um, because that white fabric is a lot thinner see-through. If you wanted to get a little bit better quality white fabric from like Walmart so you don't really see through it, you won't see your glue as much. I, of course, am taking mine to the sewing machine and I'm just going to sew right around the edges of that white fabric. Yeah, unfortunately, your glue, I wouldn't use hot glue on that one particular part, but your glue will kind of show through that thinner fabric. Um, but I wanted to give you an option for non-sewing. But like I said, if you get a better quality non-see-through fabric from Walmart, you won't see the glue. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to take my quote, my larger quote. I'm going to lay just some fabric over the top. And I'm going to go ahead and iron it on to that white section of the front of our pillow here. And just using my uh, Cricut heat press here, 375 for about 30 seconds. And then I move it over and get the rest of it. Before it's cooled off, I'm just going to go ahead and peel it off. So I peel it warm. And then that's ready to go. Our smaller quote, we're going to move on to that. I've already sewn the white piece onto the front. I'm going to lay that into position. I'm going to use that carrier sheet that I pulled off the other iron on and lay over the top. And then I'm going to do the same thing using my heat press, 375 degrees, 30 seconds. Now the instructions say if you want the quote to be matte, you peel it hot. If you want it to look shiny, then you wait to it completely cool down before you peel it off. I'm peeling it off hot. I want it matte looking. Looks really great, I think. It's just a little more grayer versus black. Okay. The next thing we're going to do um, is I wanted to stress around the edges of my pillow. So I'm just taking some threads here, as you can see, and you just pull on them all the way down. I'm doing this because I'm not gonna turn my edges in or anything. I'm gonna leave my edges out. So I wanted to stress my fabric around the edges of all my fabric pieces, front and back, including the white piece in the center. And you just pull on those threads and add that little, you know, rustic edge to it. Now for my, um, Ribbon on the black gross grain ribbon. I took the whole ribbon off the spool, fold it in half and cut it. And then I'm taking those two pieces together and I'm going to fold them in half together. And then I'm going to cut it where I folded that in half. And then you have four equal pieces of ribbon. I'm going to do that the same on both spools of ribbon. And then now what I'm doing is I'm laying that ribbon about one and a half inches in from each edge. We're going to start on the front piece of fabric, and I'm just going to pin it here. Pin it kind of in the middle and down at the bottom, of course. We'll come to the back piece in a minute. And I'm going to do the same on both edges, one and a half inches in, and we're going to pin it. Take a little bit here, and then I'm going to flip it over. And I'm going to take the other two pieces of ribbon. I'm going to line it up exactly where the pieces on the front are. Make it nice and easy, and then we're going to pin that into place. So that's done. I'm going to take mine to the sewing machine, but if you're a gluer, now here's where you can use hot glue or the Beacon Fabri-Tac glue. Go ahead and glue those ribbon pieces down on both sides of your fabric and do the same thing if you're doing the smaller size pillow, okay? We're kind of working the larger pillow, but I'm kind of showing both at the same time. So here I am just kind of sewing my ribbons into place on each piece. Make sure your two larger pieces of fabric are not together. We're sewing the ribbon on each side of the pillow separately, okay? We don't want to sew our pattern pieces together yet. 
Now, once that's done, you're going to lay both of your fabric pieces now together, wrong sides together, which basically wrong side is the inside. And we want to leave about a five inch opening here. We want to close our pillow up, but leave room for stuffing. So I usually like to pin it. So here, if you're a hot glue or Beacon Fabri-Tac glue, just go all the way around all three and a half sides, <laughs> leaving that little five inch or so opening. I, of course, am going to take mine to the sewing machine. And I really hope it's not confusing you how I'm going back and forth on the bigger pillow and the smaller pillow. Again, like I said, twice, I think. It's all the same process. I just want to be able to kind of show you both sizes throughout this process, okay? So going around this, and then once I get that done... You can see my little opening here. Now we're ready to go. And I'm going to remove all my pins I put in, of course, and we're going to go ahead and start stuffing our pillow. All right. Now I do want to go back and say the reason I didn't just wrap the ribbon around in two pieces around the entire pillow is because then we wouldn't have that rustic edge along that bottom. We would have had like this wrapped ribbon right there and it just it wouldn't have looked right so that's why i did it in four separate pieces so it can look rustic all the way around the pillow so stuff your pillow as full as you want it and then you're going to close that opening if you're a gluer with your beacon fabric tack or hot glue gun or of course i'm going to take mine to the sewing machine on it, this pillow and of course i miraculously have the other pillow all stuffed and ready to go so i'm going to close the opening on that as well and then once both of those are sewn and ready to go, we're going to finish off our pillows by taking those uh, ribbon strands that are hanging there and we're gonna tie a cute little bow in the left corner and in the right corner just to give us a little fun decoration. Now, if you didn't wanna add this ribbon, you wouldn't have to. You don't have to add the ribbon at all. You could have just sewn around the entire pillow and not have the ribbon, but I just wanted some cute, like I said, little decoration around there. So here we are on the smaller pillow, tying our bow on the right and left side, and I really can't decide which quote I actually like best. The uh, larger one that's black that we cut out with our cutting machine or the smaller one that's a little bit more of a gray tone um, that we printed out with the computer. I think both look wonderful on this design and that's why I wanted to give you the options with or without a cutting machine. But with that said, that makes this project complete. So I hope you like all the projects I made today. I mean, look at these stinking cute pillows. I oh, just love them. They're so cute. I want to display them both and they both say the same thing. <laughs> Please give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below. Number one, let me know which project was your favorite. And number two, do you like the larger or smaller pillow best? Because it really all comes down to which color quote you like. I don't know. Let me know your thoughts on that. If you walked in here today for the first time and you're checking things out and you're just digging what you saw, make sure before you click off, you hit that red subscribe button and notification bell. If you don't want to miss out on another video from me and believe me, next video we started on fall and you don't want to miss out on those projects. Before I go, I'm going to leave you with one final thought. God knows this world. He knows what can pull you away. God knows what can get you out of any situation. But you have to be willing to trust and move toward God with humility and love. Because of who Jesus is and what he did for you, every single one of you can cry out to him for his help and allow him to rescue you. Some people think you have to be blameless and clean up your quote unquote house before he will come in. That's not true. Matthew 28 simply says, come to me and I will give you rest. Not Clean your house first, and I will come. The important word here is come. So take a moment, stop, turn your face to him, go to him, and he will come to you. Turn your focus on him. Let him lead and guide you into all he has for your life. Your road may be an uphill battle, but Jesus has already climbed that hill. He already knows what's on the trail leading down the other side. He will lead you in the direction you need to go. I know that sometimes it takes a lot of courage to lean in and let him carry you down the hill, but I also know that sometimes in the midst of your circumstance, you're just too tired to take that hill by yourself. So quit trying to do it by yourself. Let him carry you. Don't let it be so hard. Don't close yourself off from the one that knows what you need. 
Don't allow the rules of your life to keep you from him. Don't allow your fears to keep that space between you. Don't resist the only one who can help you. Can I ask you a question? What are you afraid of? Are you afraid of letting go of the control? Are you afraid to feel his comfort, his peace, his blessing, his rest in your life? Are you afraid to feel his warmth on your face? Ask yourself, why am I resisting? Why am I holding on to this? Let me give you some advice. Take a breath and let it go. Don't look to the left. Don't look to the right. Keep your focus straight down the middle on God. Go to Him and find your rest. I thank you for sharing your time with me, and I'll talk with you again soon. Bye.